So now there will be a presentation with Adriana Magni, who is an interactive media designer from Kiss the Frog. During the development of five interactives for Rock, Adriana strived for designing high quality visitor experience and interactive games that are intuitive and fun, keeping a balance between storytelling and scientific content. All right, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for the presentation and thank you for inviting me to participate in this conference. Um, today I'm going to talk, as you well said, about our experience in creating an immersive experience in uh, virtual with virtual reality. So we developed this experience for uh, FRAC, the Museum of Shipwrecks, the one you are right now. Um, we developed this experience called the assignment, which was made of uh, three different uh, interactive stations and the interactive stations were all part of one story. So the visitor um, do a small assignment on each station and they can go all the way to the end to find out the story of a shipwreck. So the idea was that the visitor search for remains of a shipwreck. These remains will help them to analyze and date and find out the, the historical records and to find out the true story of the ship. The idea is that uh, the visitor has to step in the shoes of a marine archaeologist and they need to work shoulder to shoulder with a colleague. This colleague is a virtual colleague that they will find on the uh, virtual uh, experience first in the virtual reality. And uh, the idea was to convey this um, feeling of teamwork, of they are working together. So the visitor is working together to, with a maritime, marine archaeologist. The assignment starts with uh, the dive. The dive is the beginning of the story. With the dive, the visitors put on the goggles and they are going to deep dive down into the Baltic Sea towards a shipwreck. They have a mission and the mission is to photograph at least three objects with an underwater camera. So the tools they have on this, they have uh, two handles uh, with controllers, they have an underwater camera and they have a uh, control of the speed. So with these tools, they, uh, are, they put on the goggles, they dive down into the Baltic Sea and a virtual colleague, which is a body diver, will join them in this adventure. But our question is, how can we engage the visitors in the sense that we somehow take them out from the museum environment and we really put them into the shoes of a, of a diver and also uh, bring them with all the senses to immerse in the virtual reality. And we did that using some key elements. So first of all, we work with the diving environment. So how that Baltic Sea is going to look. We work different elements of the gameplay. We work with uh, storytelling, creating a, an engaging storytelling. And also we work uh, with a technical approach. So we're starting with the diving environment. This was key to really immerse the visitors and get their, their attention. So we create <clears throat> we create an environment based on all the videos that we receive from actual marine archeologists that work at IFRAC. So we go through different footage of their videos to see how was the feeling of being at certain depth or diving around a shipwreck. So we wanted to be accurate on certain things that are key for the experience. We also created a soundscape. So we wanted the visitors to feel what uh, the, the breathe under the water to feel uh, how, how was the sound of the bubbles, to feel how is the communication between two colleagues under the water. We work on that layer as well. We create also the bubbles. So at the moment they were hearing the sound of, yeah, they are breathing, but at the same time, they see all these bubbles. We um, work on the diving gear to be precise on what type of uh, equipment the divers use and also on the diver kick. So we got a little bit experts on this uh, diving experience um, to, to try to get it accurate to what actually the, the, the experts and the scientists do. Um, 
with all these elements, they are key to, to get the attention of the visitor at first. But to engage them and bring them to the end of the story, we need more elements. We need to keep the game interesting, engaging. And for that, we create a layer of a, a gamification on this virtual reality. For the game experience, we use two main uh, elements. So there, there were more, but uh, yeah, to be more synthetic, and, and these were the key elements we used. Uh, first of all, we um, created a body diver. So we create a person, a character who is diving with you in this experience and is presenting your missions. So the missions are just not instructions, it's more like a dialogue with somebody else, which is helping you to observe the environment and tell you how, um, how to dive or how to yeah, search for different things. Also, this person explain you how the interactive elements work. So yeah, you can imagine that if you are not a diver, what is an underwater camera, what is the speed, all these type of things, you need some small explanation and walk through. And also, yeah, as I say, uh, the value diver helps the visitor to go through the game and find different traces and somehow uh, achieve the goal they have. On the other hand, we use different user interface elements. This means that uh, we have yeah, the underwater camera, and anytime you use that, you will see a kind of a, a flash, a light, a sound, and those, all these feedback sounds will give you a better input of what you are doing through the game. And another thing is uh, the, on the left, you can see the flippers. The flippers uh, gives you a feeling of uh, going faster. So it's a, it's a feedback on your action, but also we um, work with the environment and with the sound. So you have a sensation of really going faster. And in the middle, you can see that there is a, a kind of a, a plan of the as a ship break from the top view, and you can see where are you diving and which objects did you encounter in any space. Um, but well, again, how can we convey with all these elements, how, how can we um, combine them together and convey the idea of teamwork that is so characteristic from a marine archaeologist? And we wanted to have not only a person, like not having a person which is telling you what to do and kind of giving you instructions, but we wanted someone who is working with you. Uh, for that, we use something that we call engaging storytelling. So first of all, we wanted the visitor to be part of the story. And that means that every action and every reaction from the visitor will cost a different effect. So different persons will have different experience in this VR uh, game. And something we really work into was the body diver as a character. So the body diver is really a character. So she has a personality. She has uh, some you know, specific characteristics. She has, uh, you, you can really notice when she gets annoyed or when she's getting impatient, you can see how motivates her along the way. So in this, this, this type of conversation that you have with the character, you somehow get to know her and you, you know what she likes, what she doesn't, and, and, and yeah, what is her thrill. Um, we wanted her to have human characteristics. So actually these characters are, are, are based on real people and real divers. And another thing is that we wanted to emphasize that the visitor's reactions create a different, the visitor's actions create a different reaction from the character. So this, this interactive storytelling is what really makes a difference on the game and, and creates a different outcome in the narrative and also, um, yeah, it surprises the visitors in a sense that for instance, if they are taking a lot of pictures because they are not really working on the on the game and so on, the the the, the, the body will have some fun reactions and some fun comments about that. Um, so last but not least is um, yeah the technical approach. 
uh, technical approach was in, in virtual reality for this type of experiences is, is a bit of a challenge because at some point you want to give freedom to the visitor, you want to allow visitors to um, do their way, do their experience, but at the same time you have some constraints and the first one is the seasickness. So it's very common that the people put the goggles and they get dizzy. So uh, with a lot of movement, with a lot of things going on. So this, this element uh, took us quite some testing. We wanted to create an experience which is pleasant and which is suitable for all target audiences. So to prevent this sick sickness, we designed a path, a diving path. So although the visitor was able to look around all the space, they were not able to dive on their own uh, way. That means that we somehow um, keep the visitor stick to going always over the shipwreck and exploring the shipwreck. And at the same time, this path was designed in a way that it didn't have kind of sharp corners or, or, or very steep movement or, or things that can get a person uh, dizzy. Another thing was uh, about having the control of the speed. So, Again, in one hand, we wanted to, to let the visitor have the control of going faster. If they are not interested in something, they can really speed it up. But after testing this quite a lot, we found out that, yeah, the, the change, this uh, sudden change of speed makes a person, yeah, very dizzy and, and, yeah, it's not comfortable. So we control that in the sense that the speed goes slowly up but in the end we create a more like a feeling of speeding up so that means that you will hear the sound of the flippers like you are uh, swimming faster you will see more particles and more things coming towards you but actually the the actual speed is not that much uh, big as the, the the one you have and another thing is that uh, we have the motion control, which means that the visitor will always move forward very, very slowly, but the, the visitor moves forward through the experience. Even if they don't uh, speed up the game, they will yeah, uh, dive uh, over the shipwreck. Another important aspect was the dual time control because this is a, a museum experience and <clears throat> we can't allow if we have uh, yeah, school groups or many people, we can't allow the people to spend hours uh, looking around in the diving experience. So that's why we design this path. Uh, so from beginning to end, they will go in one direction and the minimum spe speed I was telling uh, before to kind of control the yeah the, the the speed and the pace of the visitor as a takeaway um so some important aspects well to take into account in designing the vr experience the first of all is also the physical environment so physical environment is where do we put this virtual reality experience it's important to find a quiet corner or a quiet space where the visitor can feel safe, uh, providing, as you see here, providing stools or chairs or a bench, someone, some, something where the visitor can sit down and have a, a comfortable and a pleasant experience is very important to get the visitor immersed. If you have this experience in a place where people is walking by or, or really, yeah, maybe too noisy, or, or especially is, if it is in a kind of corridor or place where there is a lot of circulation, um, the person feels all the time uncomfortable with having things going on around and tends to take out the, uh, the goggles. And that's what we don't want because the moment they take out, they are out of this reality and we need to somehow put them in again. So yeah, taking, having a look at where are we, uh, where are we installing this experience in, in terms of physical environment that is very important. Another thing is the virtual environment. So as you saw, we wanted to be 
uh, accurate, as much accurate as, as, as possible in terms of how the Baltic Sea looks, in terms of uh, the diving gear, in terms of using the actual 3D model. So the, the shipwreck we are using is the, the scan of an actual shipwreck, which is on the bed of the sea, using sun, using bubbles. All these elements really immerse the visitor in the experience. But at the same time, we didn't go uh, very detailed in everything. So um, if you look at the experience, the, we, we didn't add it fishes for instance but in the experience you don't miss it there are so many things to look at it's so impressive to be swimming next to this shipwreck that really you didn't miss it and the moment you add more and more details um well you need more technology in terms of hardware and you need more time and it's it's a more uh, yeah, expensive experience in general so it's it's a little bit of finding a balance between what really makes a difference for the experience another thing as i say is the story so creating a story which is relevant which is true which puts the, the the visitor into a mission which is challenging and interesting at the same time is what really gets uh, the interest in the interest up and get the visitor not only finalizing this virtual experience, virtual reality experience, not only with a dive, but also with the two other stations with, which will um, wrap up and, and uh, the story. So they will find out the true story by going into these three stations. Another thing is the characters. So I told you about the characters on, on the, the body diver, which has yeah, this personality, which is very approachable, but we also created characters on the other stations. And this is the feeling of teamwork we are conveying. So there are characters for which one, which is a diver, but then we have a bone specialist and we have a clay pipe specialist and all the objects you find on the dive, you have a team working with you to analyze to date and to keep on the research. It's also very important that uh, it, they look human. So the emotional, the, the, the connection between visitors and character gets, uh, gets better and more tied into the human side of it. And yeah, to finish, yeah, we, I like to talk about the, the journey. So it's, it's important to take into account the, the visitor journey and the journey inside the exhibit. So in this case, the journey, we, we took into account the pace of the visitor. So the idea was to introduce all the elements of the story, the characters, the UI, the game elements, the, the UI elements and so on, one at a time. And that means that the visitor don't get overwhelmed with that world because the moment they put the goggles, they are under the sea in that huge world with a lot of things to, to see. And the moment you are introducing audio, text, and, and game, and so on, can get a little bit too much. And yeah, in the end, we what we want with all these elements was to make this journey engaging and touching and memorable for all the exhibits. It's, uh, it's a little bit challenging to explain this, this experience with images, still images. So I really encourage you to go to the assignment at FRAC. Uh, if you are not in, in Stockholm, if you pass by Stockholm, go to FRAC, the Museum of FRAX, and, and experience yourself this uh, VR. Because, yeah, of course, it's always a different uh, feeling being immersed in it than just uh, telling you this with uh, still images. So, yes. Any question? Happy to answer. Thank you, Adriana. We actually have a couple of questions in the chat from uh, Fredrik Trella. He's asking, if I understand it correctly, the diving path meant that the experience was a 3DOF experience. Uh, was the first question. 3 depth of field experience. And uh, for, for, if you know what uh, depth of field three depth of field and six depth of field means that's how you can move in VR, how free you are to move in VR. So. Not really. It's no. uh, what we use. Yeah, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, you can explain it better, I'm sure. 
Yeah, no. Um, yeah, what yeah. we used was the, the model. So the 3D model was always, yeah. We used the 3D model from the shipwreck. Um, and yeah, and, and we worked this in a development program that we call Unity. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I can say about it. Yeah, sorry, I said uh, depth of field. Of course, it's degrees of freedom as well. So, so you can't, if you move physically in the exhibition, you can't go forward as a diver. You move with the, the buttons, right? Yeah, control. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. That's the idea and that's the solution we came up with to prevent, uh, to control the dual time and also to prevent, again, the yeah, sea sickness and, and, and to prevent the visitor getting lost in this uh, sea and, and not really finding the, the objects they need and so on. So it's a bit of to avoid frustration and to avoid too much time spent on the, in the same place. How does the user interact with the body diver? Well, it's it's not an interaction one on one on one. <clears throat> I mean, they are not hugging or you know doing things uh, in between. But the interaction is most about uh, visitor actions and uh, body diver reactions. So, for instance, if the visitor, I think I, I said before, if the visitor, well, maybe they are too slow. So they are really looking around and not doing anything or not taking pictures or not finding objects and so on. You will see that this body diver will say, hey, come on, speed it up a little. We don't have the whole day. Or this, this kind of little um, pieces of script on the story that will make uh, this, this, this um, yeah, it will make the story interactive. So it's not interaction uh, physical, like the, the 3D model of the body diver interacts with you, but it is on the story. And anytime the visitor, yeah, do, do something, or if they are not finding the objects, this, this uh, body diver will say, hey, I think I, say, I saw something here. And somehow, these sort of comments point the attention of the visitors towards the ob objects they need to find. Thank you. Uh, let's see if we have more questions here. We have a question. What kind of hardware and host software are used? Well, software, we use Unity and the, the goggles are the Oculus Rift. Uh, and the hardware, yeah, the Oculus Rift are the goggles we used. Um, yeah, this was the, the we, we we decided on those those uh, goggles because we could add a separate computer. This this uh, game is pretty heavy in terms of graphics, and we can't allow ourselves to use the goggles who have a computer inside that are like the 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 mobile phone goggles. Let's say uh, we need a more robust uh, computer, so that's why we made the choice for these uh, goggles. Thank you. Uh, did you. Did you design and fabricate the, like the hardware, the the handles and the the blue? Yeah, plastic? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did uh, prototypes here in house, and we tested ourselves what was the best position for the handles, uh, in terms of where the commands were and how we uh, how to to keep it comfortable for different target audience and so on. And then the producers, so the builders who made the museum, they they produce the the object itself. But the testing and design and testing was here at Kiss of Frog. Okay. Thank you very much. There is, uh, I can tell you that it's a very nice experience. It's uh, probably the best uh, exhibition VR example I've seen and tried. Nice. And, uh, and it, it's nice with the, with the inertia effect that it's it's not as uh, sudden the movements as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That took us quite some testing, uh, as I said before, because you want to give freedom to the visitor. Uh, we, we, you want to, to give them the control, but in this case, giving them the control was, uh, yeah, plays against the experience and, and, and yeah, speeding up too fast was, was 
it was very uncomfortable and gets you dizzy. Um, and I think that the, yeah, the trick of using sound and using kind of particles coming towards you and bubbles and stuff that work better than, than really um, speeding up actually the, or, or using actually the, the speed range or increase the speed range of it. So, well, I'm happy that you like it and you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have anything to add, Ella? It's a really, really popular feature here at the museum. Everybody loves it, so it's really great to have. Very good job. Nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.